from Boston. He's never even been there. He's from first of all, he's down there for some fucking dance competition for his daughter. So they went down there to watch uh, watch the fights. He said he's never seen anything like it in the streets that uh, down there. I can imagine that happened all throughout California and all those areas where because we do big bar business and the bar business was big for this one. So people must have been going crazy. Well, you should have seen the fighters because you know they sit behind us and and, and and the fighters just had this shock of like he's beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Right. That's what, that's really what they all look like. All right. It's crazy. So we're clapping. So we're like. What? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All look at each other. Yeah. That's what was going on over on my side too. Yeah. People were all looking at each other like, did that just happen? Crazy. But that's I'm telling you, man. That's one of the things that makes combat sports and this sport so exciting is that when two guys go in there anything can happen and when it does you're just like ah. and and to, to go out like that like goofing around doing all the shit he did and then to get clipped and idiots that say he fucking that this fight was fixed it happened so fast and some of you said it and I, I, I was thinking the same thing you know what just happened was he goofing around is he still goofing around when he's down he's getting ready to pull guard you know and then when they show that replay and you just see him get clipped and his eyes just roll back into his head. Yeah, the fix is in. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Oh my god. Did it feel strange being in the cage, you know, after a silver fight? Yeah. And you're not wrapping the belt around his waist. Yeah, and he's still laid out on the ground. Yeah, how you know what what were you you know, just what was going through your head? Is your wrapping Yeah, I I was I was honestly still in shock until about you know, 10 minutes before I came into the press conference. Because, you know, I had all those guys back in my room. You know, I had friggin', friggin' Usher and and, and, uh, and uh, Jones and Tyson and, and and the Sons of Anarchy dudes and everybody was just in there going, holy shit, and talking about it, you know? And uh, yeah, I was in shock. I was in shock. Another one of those moments is when Anderson was sitting on the other side of the podium without the belt. That was another, you're not used to seeing him without that shiny gold just right over the horizon. Yep. But I'll tell you what. That's a testament to him. I'll tell you what. He handled it like a champ, man. He got up. He gave his interview and said what he said. Fucking got dressed, showered, came out here, answered all the questions and stayed, you know, had good answers to the questions, didn't have one-word answers and didn't act smug or, you know, handled it like a man. Do you think a part of him is relieved that he doesn't have this weighing on him anymore? He said that. I'm sure part of it is relief to have this this thing off his back, but the other part is misery, man. When you're, I'm telling you guys, maybe some of you see it, maybe some of you don't. The guys who are the champions and have that belt, their life is fucking crazy. I mean, that belt, you know, you know, Ben Henderson will sit up here and say, yeah, it's a belt, it's a title, bullshit. That belt is the key. If you do things the right way and you are smart and handle yourself the right way, that belt is the key to many, many fucking things in life. And when you're the champ, you feel it. And when you're not, you feel it too, especially if you've had it and lost it. And Anderson Silva will go home, take a couple of weeks, and maybe it won't even take a couple of weeks. And he's gonna be like, I want that fucking belt back. You know? BJ Penn, you've heard him say it many times. I didn't realize what I had when I had that belt and now I want it back worse than anything you know and when a guy starts to realize you might never get that belt or even get a chance to get near it again it's a shitty feeling you don't want to be the fucking he's got it worse than anybody the greatest fighter of all time and I don't have my belt my fucking belt back believe me guys who are real guys there's nobody more real than this guy this guy's fought everybody he's gone everywhere he's done everything he's he wants that belt back might not know it yet. He's going to know it. Yeah, quick side note. What did you say to Bonner today? Uh, to who? Bonner. Bonner and I went out back. We hugged it out. And he kept explaining to me why he did what he did. And I said, it doesn't fucking matter why you did it. You did it. You lied to me. You lied to me. And he started explaining everything. And, and I wouldn't take excuses, you know? Dude, I've always been straight up with you. I've always been fucking good to you. Anything you've ever needed, you lied to me. I'm over it. We're cool. But you fucking lied to me. No matter what the excuse is. You know? He, did he apologize? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. You know, and, and, and he talked about how much this has meant. 
to him and how much it meant to his life. And you know, one of the things that guys face, one of the guy, things that guys face is, and he said it, the UFC was a part of my life for so long. And now it was looking like it wouldn't be, which wasn't true either. Because I always said that Stefan, of course, would always have a place here. So it wasn't really true. You know, so that's bullshit. Um, and I, but I understand what he's saying. He said, this was my identity. This was everything to me. So I had to go out and I had to find. That's why, again, without getting into fighter pay and all this other stuff, it's like, oh, my God, you fucking cut so-and-so. You bastard. You, you did this and that. You did all. This isn't a long-term fucking job. You don't come into the UFC thinking, man, I'm going to stay here until I'm 65 and then I'm going to retire, get a pension, and I'm going to do this, that. It's a fucking short-term gig. You have a window of opportunity that's about this big if you're lucky. If you're lucky, it's this big. And if you're talented enough and you get in there and you do as many amazing things as you can in front of as many people as you can and make as much money as you can and, and enough contacts and this and that. So when that day, that inevitable day that will finally come when it's over, you put yourself in a great position to where you can move on and do better things. And hopefully if you played it out right, you don't ever have to work again. Who the fuck on this planet does not understand that? The guys who understand that are the guys who, Forrest Griffin is the guy who understood that. Have that conversation with Forrest and see how he lays it out for you. Never seen a guy lay it out better than Forrest Griffin. And uh, he said, Lord Forrest Griffin always says this, go out and fight like you, but go to the bank like me. Which means he's cheap as hell. <laughs> Forrest Griffin's still wearing the fucking jacket that he wore <laughs> in season one of The Ultimate Fighter. He's still driving the fucking Scion. Yeah. Right? You know, Scion yeah. fucking grabbed him and was going to do like some commercial on how many miles this kid has on his car. And it's still running. It's still got the same car. Forrest Griffin is a cheap motherfucker, and that's the way you got to be in this business. Save your money. Put it away. Do the right things with your money, because this sport, your time can be over any minute. This isn't some long-term gig. This isn't like, well, I come work for the UFC and, you know, retire when you're 65. This is a sport. Who knows how long you're in it. You know, when I listen to some of the stupid shit that reporters write and some of the stupid shit that's said on the internet about people's time while they're here, cutting this guy and cutting that guy and oh my God and fucking John Fitch and this and that and everything else, I want to I want to meet the guy who thought he was going to come here and retire at 65 and, you know, yeah, ridiculous. You never, never said anything like, hey, I know I made some mistakes. I mean, he talked for quite a while, but he never said anything like, I, I apologize to the fans. Or, I mean, I know he apologized to you. you wish you would have said anything to the fans. No. That was his moment. He got inducted in the Hall of Fame. He can say whatever he wants to say. He said what he had to say to me behind backstage. He's probably going to be upset that I told you. Here we go again. You know, I tell these, you better start learning. If whatever conversations we have, most of them, not all of them, but I give most of the stuff to you guys. I let you know what's going on, you know, and, and, I, and I tell you guys the truth. And people don't, people don't like it. The fighters don't like it a lot uh, that I do it. But why not? I don't understand why we can't, you know. Is it possible you ever offer him a position? Um, Stefan? Yeah. I don't know. Um, Stefan did pretty well. Yeah. He did all right. He went out with a bang. Made a lot of money. And uh, he's parlaying that money he made into other things right now. He's doing he's doing well. I just want I just want these guys I just want these guys to be happy. I want them to be able to fucking make a living and take care of their families. And you know, I know we, we always come across as the evil empire. Well, if we're the fucking evil empire, man, we're a pretty good fucking evil empire. We're taking care of a lot of people, and and we continue to. And you know, at the end of the day, I know who we are. I know what we do. And those are the things I don't talk about. Talk about conversations that we have. I don't ever tell you guys stuff that's done behind the scenes and, 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 and things we do for guys and stuff like that. He said it tonight. I didn't say it. Yeah, he said it. It went, uh, it went great. It was a great season. Right down to the, to the, to the fights to, to make it to the finale. It, it was a good season. The reality side, I don't know a lot of the reality stuff. I'm just there at the gym with the fights and stuff. The only, there were a couple of reality moments that I had to get involved in, of course, because these two are fucking nuts. They hate each other. 
Um, so I had to get involved a couple times, right out the bat and then kind of toward the middle. And then uh, I don't know what else happened as far as reality goes. In the Q&A today, Rhonda said she's convinced she'll look crazy by the end of the show. They're Seriously. both going to look fucking crazy on the show. You know why? They're both fucking crazy. <laughs> they bring the worst out in each other. You, 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 seriously, you know, Rhonda, I see Rhonda interact with other fighters. Katz and Ghana walked over to, to her tonight and hugged her. And, and Rhonda's like, oh my God, how you feeling? How, how long do you think it's going to be till you get back? And da da da. I've seen, look at her and Liz Carmouche. Her and Liz Carmouche fucking loved each other. They were going to fight and they went out there and, you know, tried to rip each other's heads off. These two bring the absolute fucking worst out in each other. You know? They both look like fucking lunatics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of great fights to make in that in that weight division. Um, I love Cub Swanson. I, I I just thought he looked so good tonight. So did Seaver. Seaver came out like a fucking beast, and uh, you know, Cub had to weather that storm in that first round. That first round. Seaver was putting it to him, and, and, and he looked like, Cub looked like he was off his rhythm, and I, I love Cub Swanson, man. He, he, when I talk about, there's a reason he was the first fight on the pay-per-view, you know what I mean? And when I talk about guys who want to get fucking noticed, guys who want to make money, guys who want to this, that, Cub Swanson's a perfect fucking example, you know what I mean? He doesn't come out and push you against the fence, he doesn't try to fucking stall out wins, he doesn't try to, he tries to whoop your fucking ass on the feet, on the ground, in every position he goes in. <clears throat> He's incredibly exciting. He'll fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. Cub Swanson is the exact fucking type of guy that I love and that we're looking for and, and that will be in this company for a long time. So do you see maybe it's one fight away from getting a shot maybe at the winner of Alton? That, that um, you got Pettis still. I mean, yeah. if he's at 45-55, you got, you know, so much talent in, the, in that division, which is a good thing. It's a good problem to have. Not a, it's not a bad problem to have. Um, and, and going back to Rhonda, because I, did, I didn't want to stop your question because you had already asked that. I was going to say, what's funny is we stopped filming on Tuesday. Today is Saturday. She did the Q&A yesterday. So from Tuesday she did to today. Huh? today. So from Tuesday to Saturday, she's already thinking, holy shit, I acted like a lunatic on this show. I acted crazy. What, what did I do? Oh my God, I'm probably going to look nuts on the show. She's already thinking about it, but when they're in it, and, and it's because they've been away from each other for what, four days now? Okay? When these two are within two fucking feet of each other, it is just, it's crazy. It's crazy. They bring the absolute worst out in each other. Well, and plus lately the whole thing with Misha now doing the body issue reignited this whole thing between the two of them and her you know, feeling done that when Rhonda did it, Misha was critical of it, and now she's doing it, that just started a whole new web of back and forth. My body's better than your body. <laughs> my, I know how girls can get deep My body issue yeah. looks better than your body <laughs> issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, John Jones wouldn't get off it, jeez. Yeah. Oh, is John Jones fighting about his, his too? Okay, we're kidding. My body looks better than both your bodies. <laughs> hey, you got some guys up for ESPYs this year, yeah? Yeah. Right? How do you think that awesome. go? We'll lose, we'll lose to one of the major sports. We'll make it close and then lose. But you know what? In the past, again, that's that's our fans. Our fans are so awesome that you know, it's it's that internet power, the internet that I bitch about, the good and the bad of it. You know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. The good is you know they get on there and they they, they really pump for 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 the uh, for the MMA guys to win. Yeah, we've got a great, great end of the year as long as everybody stays healthy. Um, and we got a lot of work to do for the end of this year, man. It's going to be crazy. Flying all the cities and doing all the PR. And we lost a super fight, but we got the rematch between these two. 
GSP and Johnny Hendricks is a fucking awesome fight, man. Again, one of those situations where one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world, many people believe this is the guy that beat him. Can't take him down, and he's got sick knockout power. Um, then we got uh, we got the uh, zombie fight with Aldo. You know, it's not the Pettis fight, and I was so excited for that fight. But the Korean zombie is pretty friggin' fun too. So. And what is Kane and JDS's birthday? That the best trilogy ever in UFC history. Um, what, what was your question? When is it? I just I forget what you said at the beginning of the show. Like October. October. Yeah. Yep, in Houston. In Houston. Yeah, I love that fight. I'm excited for that fight, too. And Diego Sanchez and Gilbert Melendez are on that card. Is that, is that a Yeah, are you stacking that with a little bit more of the Latino fighters just because of the proximity to Mexico? Yeah. Yep. Smart. Yep. <laughs> It's hard. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It was. It was not hard to get into Mexico City. It was hard to get a, a deal done down in Mexico. That's what was hard. Well, we got the deal done. We we can get a fight down in Mexico City now. It's just a matter of, you know, everything has to line up. We'll we'll, we'll do something once we launch, uh, you know, the Televisa deal and get that thing rolling. A, a, a fight down there's a no-brainer. No, we got no problems. Yeah, yeah. As soon as we get this TV deal rolling and get things all in order the way that we want it, we'll do a fight down there. I don't know when. ASAP. ASAP. As soon as we possibly can. But dying for Mexico. Dying for it for 13 years. Cain Velasquez is a big name. Um, wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Wouldn't hurt. You done with me? <laughs> Are you asking me a Nick Diaz question? Come on. What was it? Yeah, he said, uh, broke up with his girlfriend, wants to fight. Dana, get me a fight. <laughs> yep. Nick Diaz is under contract with the UFC. Whenever Nick Diaz wants a fight, I'd be more than happy to get him a fight. Nick Diaz called me the other night and said, all the hotels are sold out in, 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 in Las Vegas. I need a hotel room. I said, no problem, kid. I got you. Got him a hotel room. Got it all set up. Never fucking showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's the best. Now, now I'm starting to think he's just fucking with me. You know? Now I'm starting to think he's just fucking with me. Yeah. What's that? No. Awesome. I, as far as I'm concerned, I have a great relationship with Nate. Oh, yeah. Listen, he, you know, guys are going to say stupid things on Twitter. You, you know, I don't know how many times I can keep drilling guys. You know, and I bumped into Josh. Um, yeah, yeah, Josh Thompson here at the expo. He's like, I'm sorry about the whole, you know, you know said, dude, fuck it. He said, Dana, before I got into the UFC, nobody gave a fuck what I said. You know what I mean? I could have said, I like a stomp on baby heads every weekend. You know what I mean? Nobody would say anything to me. Nobody would even notice. Now that I'm in the UFC, you know, now people notice. And I said, exactly, exactly. So, you know. What he did, what he did wasn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with having an opinion. But why? Why even, why even go down that road? You know, you're not a politician. You're not a whatever. You're this, that. If there's something that you strongly believe in and you're, you're against something, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Uh, and, he, and like I said, he didn't do it in a way where he was saying negative, hurtful things to people. He just was giving his opinion. But just why? Why, why do it? It's, it's not, worth the, not worth the headaches. Talk about it amongst your friends. I don't know what made me think of this, but uh, did you hear about Rosenthal? He's serving 37 months. I did. That's the craziest fucking thing ever. Lazy ass. I didn't want to say it. So crazy, man. 
and that, yeah, I mean, and then I, plus three, I think three years parole after that. Yeah. That's yeah. so fucking crazy, man. He's locked up. Guy was like the, this huge drug dealer, and he's on TV, <laughs> refing fights every week. You know, very unassuming guy. You know, hell of a farmer, apparently though. <laughs> hell of a farmer. So crazy. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Good night, you guys. Thank you. Let's all go to sleep. Oh yeah.